This is the final question and it's on mechanics. So part A, the question is talking about when the times when P is instantaneously at rest. So if you ever see uh, at rest or instantaneously at rest, just remember that means that the velocity must be zero. So we're gonna need to work out where the velocity is zero. And since we're given the displacement X, if we want to find the velocity from displacement, remember you're gonna to have to differentiate. So we just differentiate X. Before we do though, it's probably helpful to um, to multiply out those brackets. So X equals T to the power of four over two minus the twos will cancel. So that'd be T cubed minus T squared over two. So we're trying to find, so it's at rest when dx by dt, the velocity equals zero. So let's find dx by dt, which is going to be 2t cubed minus 3t squared minus t. So if we put that equal to zero and solve it, uh, we could just take a t out there, I think. So it's 2t squared minus 3t minus 1. And then if we factorize that, we will get 2t minus 1, t minus 1. Uh, so we don't need to calculate to solve that. It's very quick to, to, to factorize. Although you could have just used the equation solver from here um, using the uh, cubic solver, in other words, a polynomial of degree three. But we can see from this, from factorizing, we're gonna get t equals zero, t equals a half, and t equals one. So that's the answer to part A. Looking at part B, we've got to find the total distance traveled by P between zero and two seconds. Now, you, you might guess we need to integrate here to find the displacement. Um, it's a bit, it's a slightly tricky question though, this one, uh, and it helps to sketch a graph. So if we sketch a graph down here, um, the equation, I'll just write it down here again. So if we sketch a velocity time graph, the area under it will be the um, will be the displacement. So, just sketching this graph, you'll see why why we need to sketch the graph in a minute. Um, so it's going to go through at zero, um, half, and one. And we're interested in, I shouldn't have put a cross there because it doesn't actually go through it too, um, but we're interested in the, um, the displacement between zero and two seconds. So if we sketch this uh, cubic equation, it's gonna look something like this. It's gonna start down here, go up, go down, and then up like this so we need to find these areas here so this is the area between zero and a half this is the area between a half and one and we also need the area whoops that wasn't very straight we also need this area here between one and two now, the reason I sketched the graph is because you can already see that this area here is going to end up being negative. So that's why we need to do these the integrals separately, because otherwise that negative will cancel out with some of the positive areas. So let's let's start integrating then. So in order to find this area here. We, we're going to need to integrate the velocity 
between zero and a half and the equation for velocities up here but we already know what we get when we integrate that because it's what we started off with when we integrate the velocity we go back to the displacement which is given in the question so we could just write down that when we integrate the velocity we're gonna get a half t squared uh, times by t squared minus 2t plus 1 again we've got to sub in half and zero then subtract let me just check that is right yes i think that's right okay so the green area there when we substitute in a half uh that will give us one eight you could just do this bit on your calculator if you like so you get one eighth uh from doing half t squared multiply that by a quarter minus two times by a half which is minus one plus one and when you put zero in you're going to get zero uh, these would cancel and so you just got one eighth times by a quarter so that's one over 32 so that green area there is plus one over 32 the red area can be found by doing the integral of the velocity between a half and one now i don't think we need to go through writing all of this down again um it's this question is only worth three marks um but I'll, i might as well do it anyway i've started now um so we've got t squared minus 2t plus one okay so this time we're going from um we're going from a half to one okay so if we just put one into all of this that will give us one half times by one squared minus two times one plus one okay so that's all going to give us um that's going to give us zero isn't it so that's going to give us zero but don't forget we've got to subtract what we get when we put a half in but we already know when we put a half into this equation we get 1 over 32 we did it down here so we've got to subtract 32 um, and so we've got 0 minus 1 over 32 so the red area is is minus 1 over 32 I should say the integral here the integral between a half and one is minus 1 over 32 the actual area is positive it has to be positive you kind of a negative area so that red area is 1 over 32 if we do a similar thing for this area here so we would need to integrate between 1 and 2 here as I said a minute ago this there's only three marks for this so you probably could just put that on your calculator but i think it's important when you're integrating to get used to showing what you get when you integrate uh, so i'll just do it one more time so t squared minus 2t plus 1 and this time we're going from 1 to 2 um, and so if we put a 2 in here let's just get that out of the way if we put a 2 in here what's that going to give that's going to give 4 over 2 so that'd be 2 and then we've got 2 squared which is 4 minus another 4 plus 1 so that is going to give us plus 2 and then when we put a 1 in we already know when we put a 1 in we get 0 we did it over here so is 2 minus 0 so it's 2 so our three areas that we've got if I just put those in a black box here so we've got this we've got this and we've got this but remember to change this integral to positive so we need to make that plus 1 over 32 because we're talking about the total distance and the distance can't be negative so the total distance 
is 1 over 32 plus 1 over 32 plus 2 which is 2 and 1 16th okay the last part of the question the question is saying show that p will never move along the negative x-axis in other words you need to show that p uh, sorry you need to show that x can never be negative here okay so if we look at this equation up here we need to show somehow that x can never be negative um so Let's just write that down. So the equation we're given in the question is x equals half t squared, t squared minus 2t plus 1. Now, how do we show that x is always positive? Well, I think the easiest way uh, to do that is you can already, you can clearly see that this bit here has to be positive that's clearly positive there so if we can show that this is always positive then that's that's all we've got to do really so in order to show that that bit in the bracket is always positive the quickest way is to factorize so the front bit is t squared over 2 and then when we factorize this bracket here we'll get t minus 1 t minus 1 so we've got t squared over 2, t minus 1 all squared. So that's helpful because whatever value of t we get, when you square it, it's going to be positive. Or when you subtract 1 and then square it, it's still going to be positive. So this is always positive. Positive because of t squared. But because you're squaring this as well this would always be positive too so this is always positive uh, 2 um, so therefore you can say that x is never x is never negative which I think will be fine to get how many marks was it the two marks for that okay so x can never be negative.